took the next right step and I went for a walk. And the next day I got up, I put my shoes on and I did it again. And the next day I did the same thing. But that short walk around the parking lot, it turned into, into making more than one circle, which then turned into walking a half a mile, which then turned into walking a mile, which then turned into running, which then turned into actually finishing my first 5K race. Hey friend, welcome to the Diet Haters Podcast. So today, is our official kickoff of the podcast and i am so excited that you're here i'm your host sunday joe uh if we don't know each other yet i look forward to getting to know you can't wait to tell you more about my 145 pound weight loss uh, we're going to talk about that later in this episode and why in the world you should hang out with me when uh, you have a thousand other podcasts that you could be listening to um, for those watching this uh i am uh, still in my workout clothes. Still smell like sweat. Got my barn hair don't care hat on. And uh, yeah, don't care. For those of you uh, not watching, um, be glad you can't see me without makeup on. Um, I, released, uh, I released a little teaser uh, episode a few weeks ago giving some, some deeper details on uh, what we'll be learning in this podcast together. And uh, I want to give you a quick recap. So the Diet Haters podcast exists to help women, and I'm sure we're gonna help some men too, learn how to stop dieting, lose weight, find lasting results, and learn their true identities in Christ. That gets me excited. You know, I once weighed uh, 330 pounds, and I get uh, what it's like to live defeated. I get that, to live in that, in that never-ending cycle of dieting. After hitting rock bottom, I turned my life around, lost 145 pounds, and I committed myself to helping others find and pursue their passions and their God-given dreams. And so now, here we are with the Diet Haters Podcast, and I want to I wanna use it to encourage and equip you on your journey to a healthier you. And so we're going to cover all kinds of things in this podcast, uh, information on health, uh, diet, wellness, nutrition, exercise, food prep, you name it, okay? All coming from from me, uh, from a gal who's been where you are and who wants to help you get on the other side of freedom. So I'm in if you're in, all right? So in today's episode, I'm going to share a bit about my journey, my weight loss story, how I lost a whole person and hopes that it inspires you to take the next right step on your own journey. All right, so let's get started. So I want to back up a second to 2008, okay? So I got my butt put in the hospital with vertigo and uh, vestibular migraines. And I was in the hospital for a few days while they ran tests, you know, and they did all the stuff that they do. And I, I remember the day that the doctor walk in, walked in and, and told me that if I didn't do something different, if I didn't do something about my weight, that I was in big trouble. Um, you know, he was a little more graceful with his words, but, but basically the gist of what he said was, hey, you're extremely overwhelmed. Wait, you're killing yourself. Um, if you don't want to die before you turn 30, you should probably do something about it. That was the gist of it. I was 25 years old. And I was dying. I mean, really, I not not only that, but I was I was the one killing myself. I was the one destroying myself. And so not only did he speak that truth to me, he then proceeded to ruin my life by telling me that I couldn't have caffeine. I couldn't have cheese, uh, chocolate, wine. And he meant like couldn't have them for a long time, not just a few weeks. Um, caffeine was my biggest struggle. Cheese was my next. But, you know, to, to tell a girl who lived off of Mountain Dew that she could not have caffeine, it felt like he was, like, reading me my last rites or something, you know, before I got shipped off to prison. But here's the thing. I had, I had two choices in that moment, okay? I could, number one, ignore everything that he said and, and take my chances. Or I could actually do something about the mess that I'd gotten myself into. And I could choose life. And so I finally decided I was going to choose life. Now, 
when I say that, don't get me wrong, okay? I, I don't want to paint some picture um, that looks like, you know, I got my crap together and everything was all rainbows and unicorn farts, okay? Because that's not the case. But, okay, what I did decide was to take the next right step and figure out the rest from there. So quitting soda was my first next right step. So I made the choice to say goodbye to Mountain Dew and I didn't make any choices beyond that that in the beginning, beyond that point. That was my, my first next right step, excuse me. I didn't um, make this big list of things that I was gonna stop doing right and commit to everything at one time. I didn't say, hey, well, time to diet and starve myself and, and, and be healthy. You know, I didn't start exercising an hour a day. I didn't put down pizzas and cheeseburgers right away. I stopped drinking Mountain Dew. Because that's how we reach our goals, right? By taking one next right step at a time. So here was the thing, okay? I didn't, I didn't know how to eat healthy. Um, I, I didn't know. Let me, let me actually, let me rephrase that. I didn't know how to um, eat healthy without being on a diet, right? I didn't know how to make healthy choices. Um, I knew that I could only, you know, on a diet, I could only eat this thing, right? This one thing. Uh, like if I was on a cabbage soup diet, I could only eat this one thing. I knew that if I was on Weight Watchers, I could count these points, right? I knew if I followed the plan where they sent the, the, the food to my house in a package that I was to eat what was in that package, even though by the time it was cooked, it didn't look or taste like food. Um, but I, I didn't know how to make healthy choices. And I think that's one of the reasons that diets don't work because they don't teach us why right? They, they just tell us what we should and what we shouldn't do. You know, I, I've pretty much been overweight since I came out of the womb, to be honest with you. You know, my mom, she, when, when I was growing up, you know, there's people that say, you know, hey, my parents had to make me finish my plate or uh, I had to eat it the next day or I wasn't leaving the table until I finished my plate. Uh, I never had that struggle. Never, never had a struggle finishing my plate. I was, usually happy to go back for seconds. You know, I knew drive throughs I knew fried chicken, I knew cheeseburgers, I knew pizzas. And I loved vegetables, but I loved them with everything fried, right? So there were things I didn't know. But when I learned them, right, that changed everything. And the same goes for all of us, right? We don't know until we don't know. But what we do from there from when we, we know something, that's what matters. What we do from there matters. So while I was recovering from my little stint in the hospital, I was actually staying with my parents um, in their condo and I was getting depressed. I was feeling sorry for myself, which just made me wanna eat more, right? I'm sure you're probably familiar with that never ending cycle. It just keeps going and going and going, right? Uh, but one day my friend Jennifer recommended I get up and go for a short walk. So I thought her advice was absolutely ridiculous, just to be honest, because I was more interested in wallowing in, in self-pity um, and feeling sorry for myself about how sucky my life was. But I decided, what do I have to lose, right? I didn't have anything to lose. So I put my shoes on and I walked around the parking lot to my parents, around my, my parents' condo. Okay. So I did it, right? Nothing spectacular happened. Um, I didn't all of a sudden get filled with all this energy, right? And this excitement about going for a walk. I didn't jump up and down about the fact that I'd gotten out of bed, right? But I took the next right step and I went for a walk. And the next day I got up, I put my shoes on and I did it again. And the next day I did the same thing. And then I started to realize that I was creating this habit, right? And my mind was looking forward to that, to that walk. We're actually going to talk about habits uh, much deeper in a later episode. But that short walk around the parking lot, it turned into, into making more than one circle, which then turned into walking a half a mile, 
which then turned into walking a mile, which then turned into running, which then turned into actually finishing my first 5K race. But guess what, right? That didn't all happen overnight. It was a process. It didn't all happen overnight. It was a process. It was taking a lot of little next right steps, which then led to hitting that big goal, right? From the, from the time I started that walk to the time I ran my first 5K race, that, that walk, a little bitty walk around the parking lot of my parents' condo, right? From the time I ran my first 5K was almost two years, two years, okay? I didn't hit that mark overnight. I implemented habits. I implemented small habits. I did one next right thing at a time because that's what matters, right? Taking the next right steps. So that same friend actually, Jennifer, in the process of my new health journey, she invited me over for dinner one night, okay? I'm telling you, this changed my life forever. You might laugh, but it changed my life forever. Okay. So she made turkey cabbage soup. And when it was time to eat, she served it to me in this, this big old coffee cup. It was like an oversized coffee cup, coffee cup, but not like, you know, as big as a bowl. And honestly, I thought she had lost her ever loving mind, right? Who does that? Who does that? You eat soup, right? From this big old bowl, you eat it with a whole pack of crackers and then you go back for seconds. That's how my life worked. But here's the cool thing. For the first time in my life, the first time that I can remember anyway, I was full. I was full. I was full from one coffee cup filled with soup. And I honestly can't even remember if we ate crackers. That day was life-changing for me. And like I said, you might laugh, it might seem simple, but it was so powerful. Why? Why was that night so life-changing for me? Because it taught me something new, right? It, it taught me that I could eat small servings and I could get full. It taught me that I didn't have to gorge myself on food. It taught me that, that I could do something different and feel good about myself. And to this day, I'm not kidding you, almost every time I eat soup, I eat it from a coffee cup. Sometimes I do go back for seconds, depends on the size of the coffee cup. But it's rare that I don't think about that life-changing day when I am pouring soup into that coffee cup. I'm not kidding you. And I still make that soup, love that soup. It's one of my favorites. Matter of fact, I haven't made it for a while. I should probably do that as it gets cold. But that was, a, that was another next right step towards victory, right? I started to, to learn how to make healthier eating choices and I learned it one step at a time. And here's the thing, I'm still learning it today because we never stop learning, right? But getting healthy isn't about knowing it all right now. It's about taking what you know taking what you learn and making the next steps to get where you need to be. You know, I didn't know when I first started my weight loss journey that eating a whole Subway sandwich probably wasn't the most ideal for my body, right? And I'm not saying that for everybody. I'm saying that for me, but I know that now. I didn't know then that trying to starve yourself with a, a limited amount of calories actually hurt your body, but I know that now. Right? I never stop learning. We should never stop learning. So in June of, of uh, 2010, I ran my first 5K race. Okay, That was so cool. I'll never, I'll never forget uh, the feeling of, of uh, victory when I ran across that finish line. Honestly, I was probably in last place. I don't even know, but I didn't I didn't care because it wasn't about that. It wasn't about finishing first, right? It was about finishing. I'd actually finished something. Y'all, I had never finished anything in my life. So for the first time, I'd actually finished something. But almost two years before that, I weighed 330 pounds. 
330 pounds. I couldn't walk up the steps uh, without needing air. Like, and when I see steps, like I couldn't even walk up my porch steps without running out of air. I couldn't buy my size 30 jeans at the store. I had to order them online. I had to have a seatbelt extension on the airplane when I went on vacation. I couldn't, I remember a time um, we went to the theater to watch, uh, I think it was a, a Christmas story, a play. I couldn't fit in the seat. It was humiliating. And here I was, a couple years later, almost two years later, on a summer day in my shorts, <laughs> my shorts that I'd had since the eighth grade, they were way too big and I still have them by, by the way. But here I was, I was running a 5K race and I didn't die. I didn't die. So that's 3.1 miles, by the way, if, you, if you're not familiar with the 5K race, it's 3.1 miles. I ran 3.1 miles and I didn't die. Like that's huge. One next right step after another led me to that day. And guess what? There were some there were some bumps along the way. Nothing's perfect, right? Let me tell you that. It wasn't just, you know, every day of my life was filled with making the right choices. But it was learning how to get back up after I fell, right? How to brush myself off and keep taking the next right step. We're actually going to dive into that deeper in um, some, some later episodes. Um, but I want to just touch on it here for a minute. I want to I want to talk about the heart. You know, I shared with you all the things that I did, some of the things I did physically to lose weight, but I want to talk about the other part of that for a minute. We didn't, this makes me a little bit emotional, we didn't wake up as little girls, right, and say, wow, I can't wait to be fat when I grow up right? I can't wait to eat through my emotions with food and, and try to hide all the horrible things that have happened to me. I can't wait to hear a doctor tell me that if I don't do something different, I'm going to die. No. Life happened, right? There's a reason that we're overweight. It's a heart issue. And I'm not talking about the physical kind of heart issue, okay? There's a reason we're stuffing our emotions with food. There's a reason we're hiding behind cheeseburgers and, and pizza and ice cream instead of facing life head on. And it wasn't until I truly started to get to the root of the issue of, of why food was my coping mechanism for life. It wasn't until then that I found true healing. And it was only Jesus, I'm telling you, that could help me find freedom from my past, from the sexual abuse, from the abandonment, from, from the rape, from the fear, from the rejection. It was only Jesus who could help me realize that I did not have to be controlled by shame. If we don't get to the root of the issue and allow Jesus to set us free from those things that are controlling us. My friend, we are never fully going to be where we need to be. If we don't allow Jesus to set us free from the addiction to food, we will always run back to it for comfort when things get hard. Even though the truth is that it's destroying every area of our lives. God made us, me and you, for more than that, my friend. Much, much more. He didn't create us to stay stuck in this never-ending cycle of shame and food addiction. That's not who he is, right? No, he created us to go out and be world changers. And I know I've said it a thousand times already as I've been telling you my story today, but I'm going to say it again, okay? Success comes from taking one next right step at a time. I didn't lose 145 pounds because I got everything right overnight. 
I lost 145 pounds because I took one next right step at a time. I implemented new habits so that I could get rid of old ones, the old ones that were destroying me. And, and a big and, I got to the root of the issues behind my food addiction and allowed Jesus to heal the broken parts of me. Now, I ain't perfect, right? I don't get it right all the time, okay? I've still got work to do. Sometimes I still find myself in struggles. I still screw up sometimes. I still have to get back up and brush myself off because we're not perfect, right? But joy is found in the journey, especially when Jesus is on the journey with us, right? Can I get an amen? So I know I've probably given you a lot to think about um, today, but I just want to thank you, first of all, for letting me share part of my story with you. Um, I hope it inspires you today to, to take that next right step, okay? And, that, and I, want to, I want to leave you with this challenge today, actually, okay? I want you to ask yourself, what is that one next right step that you need to take today? Write it, take some time and write it down. Put it in front of you. Talk about it. Say it out loud. And start taking it. One next right step at a time, right? Then take it again and take it again. Take it again tomorrow. Take it again the next day, the day after that. And I'd like to, uh, if, if you're up for it, I'd love to give you another challenge. I'd love for you to share it with me. What's the, what's the first next right step that you're going to take? Uh, you can come on over um, and find information about this episode on Instagram. You can find me at Sunday Joe. That's at S-U-N-D-I-J-O. And leave a comment. Let me know. What is the next right step that you're taking today? I want to root for you and I want to cheer you on. If I can lose 145 pounds, you can lose weight too. Whether you need to lose 10 pounds, uh, 20 pounds, 50 pounds, 100 pounds or more, no matter what it is, if I can do it, you can do it. Okay, if I can do it, you can do it. So I am, uh, I'm looking forward to diving deeper into the Diet Haters podcast with you um, as we learn how to keep taking next right, next right steps, as we learn to say goodbye to dieting, and as we learn our true identities in Christ. And uh, if, you, if you have enjoyed today's episode, would you mind heading over and leaving a review wherever it is that you listen to podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever it is that you listen, leave us a review and, 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 and let me know what you thought about the episode because this, this helps the word get out to others and that's what we want to do, right? We, we want people to hear this podcast so that they can be inspired to take the next right steps as well. And if you want to get email reminders of new episodes uh, before, when they release, you can sign up at diethaters. Dot net. That's diethaters.net. And if you haven't already, I've got something free for you, okay? You can download my free ebook, Step Away From That Diet, Five Simple Steps to Help You Lose Weight and Gain the Confidence You've Been Searching For. So in the book, I share some simple, not necessarily easy, but simple steps to help you get back on track. You deserve better, my friend. You do. You deserve better than what you are believing about yourself. And I am ready to help you take the next right step to get where you need to be. Step away from that diet will help you overcome the diet mentality. Uh, learn how to remove the barriers getting in the way of your freedom. Find encouragement on your journey and more. And my favorite part, don't miss the special prayer that I have written at the end, personalized just for you you. You can download it at sundayjoe.com S-A-F-T-D. That's sundayjoe.com S-A-F-T-D. I'll also share the link in the show notes for you. All right, my friend, that is it for me today. And I will see you in the next episode of the Diet Haters Podcast. And don't forget this, you are valuable.